So the reason you should be doing programming team problems is, first of all, if you want to get a job after college, um, specifically an engineering job or a software engineering job, a lot of the problems we do in a programming team is going to be very much similar to the problems that you'd be trying to solve or in something like a tech interview. Um, so there, that's like a practical purpose. Um, and then second of all, it's also just very fun. Um, if you want to kind of get integrated into the, I guess, computer science community, um, doing these kind of problems, working with people um, is a really fun way to go about that. Um, and then you often get some other benefits like pizza and whatnot. Um, so uh, with that, um, let's open up Firefox and uh, figure out how to do this or submit problems. Um, if you want to go to the website, at least the one that we use, it's uh, caddis.com or not caddis.com, but you'll see what I mean. Um, obviously, there's no problems here. Um, you got to click for problem solvers um, and then take me there. And it just takes you to open.caddis.com. So <laughs> if you want to make that a shorter process, just type in open.caddis.com. Um, and then uh, let's choose a problem. Um, I kind of selected one for this video. Generally, um, if you want to just select the problem, you would just go over to problems and then choose something that sounds interesting, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you know the specific URL, you can also just type it right here. It's, uh, it's slash problem slash and then the specific name for um, the problem. Um, so we're just going to kind of do an easy one just to kind of see how you um, read an input and um, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be doing this in uh, Java and Python, um, but in the future I think I'll just stick with Python simply because it's a lot easier to mess around with your solutions and uh, quickly code something up. Um, and you'll notice that as we kind of get into this. So generally how it works in terms of solving these problems is um, we... Uh, you know, read the description here, um, and then create a file um, that can take in this input that, that is in the format specified in this input section, and then outputs the correct answer um, in the same format as this output section. Um, so I guess we can just start reading this here. So carrots are good for you. First of all, they give you a good night vision. Instead of having your lights on at home, you could eat carrots and save energy. Ethnometically, it has been also it has been shown that the roots of carrots can be used to treat digestive problems. In this contest, you also earn a carrot for each difficult problem you solve, or Hufflepuff problems as we prefer to call them. You will be given the number of contestants in a hypothetical contest, the number of Hufflepuff problems that people solved in the contest, and a description of each contestant. Now find the number of carrots that will be handed out during the contest. Um, so for this problem, given that a carrot is given out for every hard problem that is solved, or Hufflepuff problems, um, the number of carrots that are given out in the contest will be the same as the number of Hufflepuff problems that were solved during that contest. So whatever the number they give us for the Hufflepuff problems is going to be the number of carrots. So um, the details about each person or each contestant actually is completely um, useless. Um, <laughs> so the input is in this format. So the input starts with two integers. Um, and that's when it says starts, it means the first line of input. Um, and then, uh, so it's N and P um, on a single line, denoting the number of contestants in the contest and uh, number of Hufflepuff problems solved in total. And then follow N lines. So whatever number this is, is going to be the amount of lines that come after it. Um, uh, uh, each consisting of a single not empty line in which a contestant describes him or herself. You may assume that the contestants are good at describing themselves in a way such that an arbitrary five-year-old with hearing problems could understand it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, this is all unnecessary information, but uh, I guess they kind of want to throw you off a little bit. Um, and then the output should consist of a single integer, the number of carrots that'll be handed out during that contest. So yes, yeah, so this is generally kind of how it goes. Um, they give some details that you need, some details that you don't, and you kind of have to figure out which ones are actually important. Um, sometimes that, that's not true, but you know, um, depends on the problem. Um, so there are a little bit more details too. Um, the CPU time limit, if you go to this metadata section, is one second. So your program um, can never run more than one second, basically, so no matter what input they give you. So if it's like the max input, it still can't run um, the max amount of like um, num uh, like a thousand here is the limit here. So if these are both a thousand, um, then it should still run in under a second, essentially. Um, 
Yeah, so the output should consist of a single integer, the number of carats. So we're basically, all we want to do is copy this number and then print it. Um, so not an extremely difficult problem, but it still just shows to how to input, submit these problems. Um, so yeah, let's open up um, Visual Studio Code or whatever text editor you want to use. Um, and then just solve this in Java. So I'm going to open my folder. Um, where is that? I think it's here. Yep. And then I'm going to make a new file here. Click in this. Called carrots.java. Excellent. Okay. So, same stuff you probably already know. Start by defining the class and then writing the main method. So, Um, so, okay, so the next thing we need to do here is uh, figure out how do we read this input in here. I'm going to open these side by side just so we can keep this right here and then close that. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, so um, in order to read input in Java, you need to um, import. Uh, scanner. So that's java.util.scanner. Um, and what that does is it allows us to read an input essentially. So what we have to do is we create a scanner object and then in the constructor of that scanner object we write system.in and that denotes that it's going to be taken in from the, the terminal or the command line. Um, and then now so let's see here um, we want to get this first line, so I'm going to say string input is equal to this first line, which is going to be the next line, um, since we haven't asked for any lines yet. So that would be the first line. Um, after you've done this, the next time you call next line, it's going to be calling it for this one. Um, so if we wanted to, you know, um, scan in all of these names here. We could say, you know, put a for loop here. Um, but we would need access to this number n here. So to do that, um, I'm going to first make a string array called uh, split input. And then I'm going to use this method called split that Java has. And what it does is it um, splits the string um, based on the given separator. And so there's a space here between this two and this one. So it's going to make an array of strings, uh, the first item being two and the first second item being one. And you could also put like a squiggly line or whatever you want here, but uh, we want that space. So. Um, it says n, or number of contestants, so I'm going to make that an integer. It says number of um, contestants. Um, and I think you do integer dot parse int. Yeah. And then we want the split input. Let me make this smaller here. Um, and then that's going to be the first item, is the number of lines. So that's this two. So then we can loop over these. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than um, num contestants. And like I said, uh, there these names actually don't matter at all. So all I'm actually just going to do is just say scanner dot next line, so that we can process all of the input, but we don't actually need to use it at all. All right, and then so just to kind of, for uh, posterity's sake here, I'm just gonna write a little explanation here. That's gonna be split input, and this is what uh, input looks.
looks like. Okay. And uh, all we want to do now is print that second number. So since we have a nice little array of strings here, we can just print out split input uh, and then one for the one item or the second item, depending on how you look at it. Okay. Um, all right. I think this looks good to me, so I'm just going to try to test this. Um, you can either click this button or just highlight all of it and copy it. I'm going to run this. All right. Okay. I think that looks good to me. Uh, printed out a one here. Um, so this is my output. I'm just going to copy this as well. All right. Awesome. Okay. Let's try to submit this now. So you can actually upload the file for submitting it. However, I find it easier to just copy all of the text of the program. I'm going to log in here. Back to carrots. And uh, I'm going to choose Java. Copy that, paste that right there. And uh, submit. Awesome. Okay. So everything passed. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead and uh, do this in Python now, real quick. Okay, it's not pi. And uh, so we need the input. That's as easy as saying input is equal to input. Um, and then we need the second item. So input. Oh no, wait, we need to loop through all these. So let's say split input. Let's uh, input dot split. And then you could do this like you do in Java. However, the default for split is to separate it by spaces. So um, this is doing the same thing as we were doing here, um, separating by spaces. And then uh, we want the rest of the items. So um, for i in range, and then I'm going to call int, which converts a string into an integer or whatever object. Um, and I want the first item. that yeah okay and then I'm gonna just call it input that might not work let's say X equals input eh. I think that works I haven't used it usually when you read input for these problems you actually need to use them most of all the information they give you um, but in this case we don't actually need any of this and then I'm going to print split input and the uh, one item. So I'm going to run this now. Okay, so here's here's a issue that I, you kind of run into sometimes. You can't um, sometimes when you plus click this run button, it actually does this output for debugging the code. Um, but what you can do is just say run Python file and it will put it into terminal. Okay, yeah, so I was right. You can't just you can't just say that. And we can just say x is equal to input. Ooh. Oh, I see here. Um, we called this input, so I'll, I'll just call this in, or in, uh, I don't know, um, line, and then I'll place all the, that, okay, there we go, okay, so 2, 1, carrots, bunnies, same thing, um, as you can see, Python does make this like a lot easier. So <laughs> it's up to you. Um, I would recommend to use Python. 
um, just because you can kind of quickly come up with solutions and mess around and debug. So it, it kind of removes the, the barrier of you actually thinking about the problem solving part of, of programming team. Um, whereas Java, you kind of have to look up, oh, what, uh, what class do I need here? Um, all this boilerplate and stuff like that. And you can run into some kind of issues like that where Python, everything's kind of built in. So um, you can kind of do whatever you want a little bit. But yeah, um, so yeah, we solved the problem. Um, I guess I'll submit the Python here. Okay, yeah, it works just fine. So yeah, um, that was a pretty easy problem. Uh, I, I promise that they'll be getting more interesting than that. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, this helps um, you get into actually solving these problems. Um, and yeah, so just message on Discord if you have any issues with anything. And uh, have a good Christmas and Happy New Year.